Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Hawkeye Firefly 4K split camera. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up and perform a legacy test. On the upcoming videos which are going to be released in the next couple of days I'm going to upload some flight footage and also head outdoors and compare it side by side with the CAD X0. Inside its box we can find the Hawkeye Firefly 4K split camera and now it's the control board that will enable you to configure the camera. Two identical six pin harnesses, some stickers, the user manual, which is available both in English and Chinese, a mini to full size camera adapter, and this plastic part that will prevent the micro SD card from being accidentally ejected. The Hawkeye Firefly 4K split camera is based on two components, a mini sized camera and the main board. The camera is connected to the main board using this not very flexible cable and personally I prefer this type of cable that is being used by the Cadix Turtle V2 however on the other side this cable sometimes can break and this type of cable seems to be a little bit more robust. The main board features 30 by 30 mounting holes so it's not going to be compatible with most of the micro builds however Firefly are working on a newer version that is going to feature a single 20 by 20 board and a micro sized camera. The auto dimensions of the main board are 39.5 by 37.9 by 6.8 millimeters and the auto dimensions of the mini sized FD camera are 22.5 by 22 by 26.1 millimeters. Its weight is 21.7 grams and if we add the mini to full size adapter the weight is 22.9 grams and including this plastic part the total weight is 33.3 grams. So the Hawkeye Firefly 4K split camera is a little bit heavier than the Cadex Tarsier which weighs 19.6 grams. In terms of technical specifications the Firefly split 4K supports 4K at 30 frames per second 1080p at 120 or 60 frames per second, 2.7K at either 60 or 30 frames per second, and 720p at 240 or 60 frames per second. It supports of course both PAL and NTSC and it's stated over here that the PAL has lower latency and shortly I'm going to test both options. The supported micro SD card is between 8 to 120 gigabytes and it's recommended to use a U1 card especially when recording a 4K video. On the main board of the camera we can find an onboard microphone, a micro SD card slot, two LEDs that are going to indicate the camera mode, a buzzer, a connector for the OSD control board which is the only way to configure the camera since Wi-Fi is not present. Next to it we can find a six pins connector, the left pin is the VCC, the supported voltage is between 7 to 25 volts, Next to it the ground, video out, VBAT sensor that will enable you to display the battery voltage on the OSD and two RC trigger pins which will enable you to either capture a photo or start or stop the recording of the video externally. On the other side of the board you can find a micro USB port that will enable you to access the content of the micro SD card. Next to it a micro sized HDMI connector and on the other side the OK slash power and mode buttons. Now I've got the Hawkeye camera directly connected to an FEV screen. On the on-screen display we can see the camera mode, over here a timer, on the center the call sign and on the right corner we can find the battery voltage which right now shows zero since the VBAT sensor is not connected. In order to start recording you will need to press the OK button and as you can see we can see an indication of the recording over here and if you'd like to stop the recording procedure you will need to press it again. In case you are going to unplug the battery and the board is going to shut down while it's still recording the last file is still going to be saved which is a very important feature. The OSD control board as I mentioned before will enable you to configure the camera and you can also use it to start and stop the recording. So pressing the center button is going to start the recording and pressing it again is going to stop it. The up and down buttons are going to switch between camera and video modes. The right button is going to enable you to access the gallery where you can play the recorded files and I found that this section is a little bit glitchy. 
and sometimes it got stuck, so hopefully it's going to be solved on the next firmware update. In order to go back, you will need to press the gallery button again, and now we're back to the video mode. Pressing the left button is going to enter the configuration menu. Here you can set the resolution between all the available different modes. You can also set loop recording, so a new file is going to generate it either every 3, 5 or 10 minutes. And if you'd like, you can simply turn it off. The wide dynamic range by default is set to off, and I'm going to set it to on for my testings. You can also manually set the exposure. You can set whether you'd like to record audio or not. By default, data stamp is turned on, so the data stamp is going to be appear on your videos, and this is probably a feature that you would like to turn off. Here you can set the image stabilizer. I'm going to turn it on for my tests. You can also turn on time-lapse record. And this feature exists mainly because this camera is not intended just for FPV and can be used for other features, but of course for FPV this is probably not going to be applicable. You can also turn on slow motion mode. The metering can also be changed. You can set also the sharpness, and on my test I'm going to set it to soft, as recommended by Hawkeye. You can set the auto recording, and I actually recommend to turn it on, because it's going to make things easier. The camera is going to start recording when you plug the battery, and then you can simply unplug the battery and the recording procedure is going to be stopped. So it's going to make things a little bit easier. Next you can set the codec, so you can set it to H.264, which is the default option, and if you'd like you can set it to H.265. Next you can set the snapshot in recording, so it's going to take pictures for the first either 5, 10 or 30 seconds, and the snapshots are going to be saved to the microSD card. Fixed frame rate can be turned either to on or off, by default it's set to on. You can change the values of the electronic shutter, by default it is set to auto, but if you'd like you can change it to these values. Pressing again the left button is going to take us to the second configuration menu, where you can set the date and time. You can set the auto power off, so by default it is set to off, but if you're going to set it to either 1, 2, 3, 5 or 10 minutes, the camera is going to shut down if it's not going to be active, and I recommend for FPV to leave it off, because if the camera is not going to record, you don't want to shut down after a minute, for example. You can also turn on and off the beep sound, and as you can hear, now it was silenced. The language can be set to any of these values. You can set the frequency to either 50 or 60 Hz, and you need to check which one is used in your country. TV mode can be set either to NTSC or PAL. The HDMI output can be either set to 1080p 60 frames per second, which is the default option, or 720p 60 frames per second. OSD mode can be either turned on and off, so if you'd like, you can simply turn it off. The logo watermark by default is set to on, so the Hawkeye image is going to appear on your videos or photos, and excuse me Hawkeye, I'm just going to turn it off. The ISO value by default is set to auto, and you can change it to any of these values. Next you can set the image effect, which probably is not going to be applicable for FPB, but if you'd like you can play around with it. The white balance by default is set to auto, but if you'd like you can set it to these predefined settings. You can also turn on and off the distortion correction, by default is set to off, but if you'd like to try to fix the fish eye effect, you can turn it on. The field of view by default is set to large, but it can be also set to medium or small. The image rotation by default is set to off, but if you'd like to position the camera upside down, you can turn it on, and then the video is going to be rotated. In case you're going to use the VBAT sensor and you will need to adjust it, you can do it under this menu, so you can adjust it in 0.1 increments between minus 0.5 and plus 0.5. Here you can format the micro SD card, so if you're going to press OK, all the data is going to be deleted. Over here you can restore everything to default settings. 
Here you can check the firmware version that you are running and I've already upgraded the firmware to the latest version and if you'd like to upgrade the firmware you will have to go to Hawkeye's website, download the latest firmware, put it on the root directory of the micro SD card and power up the camera and then it's going to take about a minute for the firmware upgrade to be completed. Make sure not to disconnect anything while the camera is upgrading because then you might break it and after the upgrade procedure is going to be completed, the upgrade file is going to be deleted automatically from the micro SD card, so you don't have to remove it manually. In order to exit the menu, you will need to press the left button again, and now we're back to the video feed. Now by the way, now over here we can see this icon that indicates that the image stabilization is turned on. Now by the way, as you can see, the camera has been turned on for almost 20 minutes, and with other types of camera, I experienced the boards getting really hot and this is not the case with this board using my new tool, which I just received today. At the hottest point, the temperature is around 40 degrees, so you can safely run this camera for long periods without the fear that it's going to overheat. In case you would like to use the HDMI output, you should note that only one video output can work at a time. So if you're going to plug the HDMI connector, you can see that now only the HDMI screen is working and we lost the video on the other screen. For now, the micro HDMI port is going to be probably mostly useful for users other than FEV, but of course you can also use it for digital video transmission. Changing between the different video modes can be also done using the mode button. You will need to press it for about a second and then you can see that the video mode is going to be changed. The indication is going to be shown over here and you can also refer to the user manual and see the corresponding indication of the LEDs to the selected mode. The next thing I've done is to measure the latency of the Hawkeye 4K split camera, both on NTSC and PAL, and while the camera was recording and while it wasn't. Let's start with NTSC when the camera wasn't recording, and in order to measure the latency, I filmed the FEB screen and turned off the light. I recorded the video at 240 frames per second, which means that every frame represents about 4 milliseconds. So you can see over here, we can still see the video, and it took 14 frames for the screen to go completely dark on NTSC mode while the camera wasn't recording, so I can estimate that the latency is about 55 milliseconds. On NTSC mode, while the camera was recording, it took about 17 frames for the screen to go completely dark, so I can estimate that the latency is between 60 to 70 milliseconds. Moving on to PAL, when the camera wasn't recording, it took about 17 frames for the screen to go completely dark, so the latency is between 60 to 70 milliseconds as well. And actually, on the user manual, they're wrong. NTSC should have less latency than PAL, since the resolution of PAL is higher than NTSC. On PAL, while the camera was recording, the latency was even higher, and it took 19 frames for the screen to go completely dark, so the latency is between 70 to 80 milliseconds. So the latency is a little bit on the high side, but anyway, this camera is not going to be used for racing, and I think that 60 milliseconds can be acceptable just for freestyle, and the most important is to see how this camera is going to perform, which is going to happen in the next couple of days. In addition, another issue that I hope Firefly are going to take care of on the next firmware update is the ability to switch between aspect ratios. And right now, the camera is fixed to 16 by 9, and hopefully they're going to be able to add the 4 by 3 option. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the Hawkeye Firefly 4K split camera, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.